What a scene here in Fayetteville as we get set for tip-off between 23rd ranked Kentucky and Arkansas. Final day of the SEC regular season. It's a whiteout at Bud Walton Arena as we take a look at the starting lineups and the big headline here. Kaysen Wallace, the freshman point guard for Kentucky, will not play today. He's out with an ankle injury. And Steve Lapis, that is a big issue for the Wildcats. Especially because of who they're playing and where they're playing them. Now this Arkansas team beat Kentucky at Kentucky and had 23 points off turnovers. That's the big problem for Kentucky this afternoon. There is John Calipari, and on the other sideline is Eric Musselman in his fourth season with Arkansas. These two teams met on February 7th in Lexington, and Arkansas won by 15. For those who were watching the Alabama A&M game, Texas A&M did hold on to win, so here we are, game two of our triple header alongside Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. Our officials today, Don Daly, KB Burdett Jr. and Rob Rourke, and we are underway in Fayetteville. And we see Kentucky playing man-to-man. -man. They've played 10 possessions of zone all year. You're gonna see some zone in this game today. And CJ Frederick got a hand on that one to break up the pass. John Calipari told us pregame he can't remember ever going into a game without a point guard. And that is the situation today. Casey Wallace out, Severe Wheeler out as well. It's going to be Jacob Toppin bringing the ball up as he travels along with C.J. Frederick and Adu Thierro. Do you remember ever going into a game without a point guard? Without any point guard? Probably not. It always had somebody at least, but this is going to be a tall order for them. They're going to do it by committee. As you said, Toppin is going to be bringing it up a lot in this game. Open three for Nick Smith Jr. And Arkansas is on the board. You know, this Arkansas team only makes five threes a game. C.J. Frederick cannot answer, but an offensive rebound for Oscar Shibwe. But that's because Nick Smith has hardly played this year. He is a tremendous three-point shooter. He changes everything for the Razorbacks from the three-point line. Before the shot, there's a whistle and a foul called against the Razorbacks. How about this stat, Andrew? They were 300, Arkansas was 325 in the nation from three-point land six games ago. He's been back for six games. They moved up to 290 because of him. <laughs> But that said, Calipari told us that he's probably going to look to clog the interior today and let Arkansas shoot some of those threes, which Smith already made. You got to pick your poison. You can't stop everything. Frederick on the attack and a foul is called. We'd like to welcome some of you to Fayetteville, Arkansas, where the game just began a short time ago alongside Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan, Arkansas, thanks to a three ball from Nick Smith Jr. out to an early 3-0 lead. And if you are just joining us, the big news is that Kentucky is without Cason Wallace today. He injured his left ankle in Wednesday's loss against Vanderbilt. He is day-to-day, -day. John Calipari telling us he hopes to have Wallace back for the SEC tournament, which starts next week. But without Wallace and Severe Wheeler still out, Kentucky is without a point guard today, something John Calipari told us he has not had to face in his career as Smith misses, but an offensive rebound from Mikel Mitchell. Mitchell inside, rolls around and out. And there's probably not a worse place in the nation to have to go without a point guard to Bud Walton Arena. Kentucky had 23 points they gave up to Arkansas of turnovers in the first game that they lost by 15. Jacob Toppin knocks it down. I also think Kentucky's going to try and control the tempo of this game because they don't want this to start going up and down where they have to make passes all over the place against a team that averages eight and a half steals a game. Anthony Black puts it up and he draws the foul. And that is nothing new. Anthony Black draws 
five fouls per game. So difficult to defend the point guard at 6'7", 198 pounds. Well, that's the thing I was most impressed about when I saw practice yesterday. I said, man, how big is this kid? I mean, this is a 6'7", legitimate. He may have even grown a little bit, they told us. 6'7", legit point guard. McDonald's All-American was one of the best players in the country coming out last year. And had a big game when these two teams met back on February 7th in Lexington. A 15-point Razorback victory. Black had 19 points, 5 assists, and 5 steals for Arkansas. And those steals, especially at the start of the second half, really started to turn that game around. One out of two for Black, but the rebound taken away by Mitchell, and then he throws it off Sheboy. Well, Mikel Mitchell had a great game the first time around. He did an unbelievable job on Sheway. Great hustle play there, throwing the ball off the leg out of bounds. Eric Musselman starting both Mitchell twins today, and Jordan Walsh, the freshman, will come off the bench. That's got to be a big difference for Kentucky today. Last time, only seven points and seven rebounds for Oscar Sheepway in that game. He only took six shots. And that was because of the defense of Mikel Mitchell and his twin brother, Makai. Did a great job locking up Sheepway. Black inside. Too strong. Sheepway has it, and he'll bring it up the floor. Why not? You know, one thing about the Kentucky team that's playing now, they are pretty long and athletic, and they are very good defensively. Sheboy lost it. It'll stay with Kentucky. Eric Musselman was looking for a charge. That looked like it's grazed off Sheboy's foot. Arkansas's defense, much different than Kentucky's. They're going to come out and pressure you hard and force turnovers. Reeves off the mark. And Black racing up ahead. Locate Smith Jr. Bounces it to Mitchell! Those are the kind of baskets that Kentucky does not want to give up. Because that's going to make this building that much harder to play in. Reeves hits that one. Coming really good off. answer there. Yeah, yeah, and he didn't have his best game Wednesday against Vanderbilt. He was 4 of 17 from the floor. They need a big day out of Reeves and, this afternoon. And he's been terrific all year, the transfer from Illinois State. Here's Smith Jr. playing in his 12th game of the year. Finds some space, but can't hit it. Tipped around and Reeves controls. CJ Frederick on the fake. And a foul is called. Shibwe and Mikel Mitchell locked up and exchanging some words. They call the double foul. And they're still talking. Mikel Mitchell and Shibwe are still exchanging words. On the left of your screen, getting tied up inside. Oh. And this is something our officiating crew is going to take a look at. Yeah, a whole lot was going on underneath that basket. They, the call on the floor was a double foul. And they're going to make this the media timeout, 16-12 to go in a heated start in Fayetteville. The officials are still looking at that last play. We'll take a look at our fast analysis presented by AT&T 5G. Well, in that first game, Arkansas scored 23 points off turnovers to 10 for Kentucky. They do a great job of helping, and this is how they get their transition game going. That's what Kentucky's got to look for tonight. All right, this is what the officials are still looking at. Shibwe and Mikel Mitchell locked up inside. Both called for fouls, but that elbow by Shibwe is something we need to take a closer look at. Gene Steratore, what do you see there? Well, that's definitely what Don Daly and his partner are looking at right now, Andrew. And I think what you look at in a couple different ways is 
Did Dawn Daly have a double foul prior to the elbow that Shibwe throws? If he does, they could have a double foul followed by a dead ball contact technical foul on Shibwe. Or at any time here, they're looking at that, that elbow that's thrown by Shibwe. And to me, guys, that's an elbow to the head neck area. It looks like it would fall in the category, in my opinion, to being on that flagrant two level because he lines him up a little and delivers a serious blow to the head neck area. We know if it's a flagrant two that he would be ejected as well. So, so there's a lot of different elements to what they're looking at. And a lot of it is the timing on when that foul was called, whether it was a double foul followed by a dead ball contact tech or if part of the double foul was what they would deem to be flagrant one or flagrant two here. Yeah, I, I think it was a double foul because I saw the ref right away. And whatever happened, happened after the call. So I'm going to think Gene dead ball technical foul. And I think Arsh Kashibwe is going to be gone. I, I don't disagree with that, Coach. And uh, and I think you're right. I think Mitchell does kind of grab and, and Shibwe gets locked up early in the post. And when Daly comes in, they are still in that moment. And then the elbow does follow quickly after, but I believe after as well. And, and I also agree with you that that's an ejectable offense, in my opinion. Looks like our officiating crew has come to a decision. They're informing the public address announcer. And as soon as we get word, we'll pass it along. I'm a little surprised that they haven't said anything to the coaches yet. I would think if you're throwing Sheepway out of the game, which maybe they're not. I would be telling John Calipari first before the, it's announced to the crowd. And here comes the explanation. Wow, so Shibwe is wow. not getting ejected from the game. Common fouls called, Steve. What and, do you think? And contact technical fouls, but on both guys. I'm a little surprised, i got to be honest with you. I'm really surprised. I don't know, maybe I didn't get a good look, but I didn't see the Arkansas kid do something that raised the level of what Oscar Shibwe did by any means. Eric Musselman is not happy being informed of the decision. Gene, what's your takeaway from the verdict? I'm kind of with coach on this one too, Andrew. Look, Mitchell does do a little pushing after the whistle. You'll see a little push, but but the action by Shibwe to me, that doesn't appear to be something that would be equal and offsetting. Now, they're both contacted evidently after the whistle was blown and after the officials came to the conclusion that a foul's occurred on each. But to me, it looks like one is much more egregious than the other and just an offset there doesn't feel right to me personally. I, I have to 1,000% agree with Gene. I, I don't know. I'm surprised after looking at that, that this is what they came away with. Put it this way, Mikhail Mitchell got by far the worst of that one. Yeah, and Mikhail Mitchell, that's his second foul. So he's out of the game now. The technical was called on Anthony Black. Yeah, that's what I didn't understand either. What, what did he have to do with that whole thing? There was a lot of talking. Yeah. I think that's what it was. But a big break here for Kentucky as Shibway is still out there. And Mikel Mitchell is now on the bench with two fouls. Ricky Council has checked in for the Razorbacks. Look how they're packed in Kentucky defensively. Council on the attack. Out off the glass, no good. Five on four the other way. Livingston in transition all the way, and he missed it, but Shibway with the follow. Kentucky taking advantage of that missed shot. They're going to run when they can. At least that way they don't have to sit up in the half court the whole game. But I think tempo-wise, they're only going to run when they absolutely have it. Smith, tough shot. Well short. Mitchell catches it, and the putback won't go down. One guy to keep an eye on today for Kentucky is C.J. Frederick. Calipari told us pregame that he's still in a lot of pain with his rib injury as Shibwe is fouled. And he hopes that Frederick can give him five minutes a half. He's still in there right now. Well, Livingston goes in transition and Shibwe running the floor. Nobody sees him coming. Nobody puts a body on him. 
Ojibwe hearing it from this sellout crowd at Bud Walton Arena. He's going to hear it the rest of the day. I'm going to say this, not to belabor the point. Well, Friday on CBS, it's TV's top new series, Fire Country. The show critics call explosive, red hot, and crushing harder than ever. Don't miss a new episode of Fire Country, Friday, 9, 8 central on CBS. I'm going to say this, not to belabor the point, but Eric Musselman is definitely sending that tape into the SEC office. <laughs> As soon as he gets out of here. Jalen Graham comes on the floor. Jordan Walsh out there as well as Makai Mitchell heads off. And Kentucky has a four-point lead. And one thing, Jordan Walsh had his best game in the SEC against Kentucky at Kentucky. He scored 13 points in that game. Eric Musselman praised his aggressiveness in the win at Lexington. Arkansas has missed seven of its last eight. And Jalen Graham changes that around. Very physical down low. Shibwe and Graham, and Shibwe beats him. You know, I'm a little surprised, Andrew, that I'm not seeing the heat that Arkansas can put on you, and especially on the ball. They haven't really done it so far in this game like we expected. Wow, extra pass, and the finish for Black. Eight points, five rebounds already for Oscar Shibwe. Boy, this guy really knows how to use his body. That's what you call a ducking, hard ducking. So he already has more points in the first six and a half minutes today than he did the entire game against Arkansas on February 7th. Frederick had it, and Livingston will bring it up. and baseline and nobody home for Arkansas. And a foul called as well. Devontae Davis called for the foul. Well, two guys were on Frederick there, so they were really all messed up rotation-wise, Arkansas, and that's why Toppin was so alone in the corner. Eric must have been not happy with that defense there. Musselman's had a lot of success against Kentucky since becoming the Arkansas head coach. He's 3-1 and one against the Wildcats, and he's won three in a row. The Kentucky game plan defensively is really good. Pack it in, try and keep them away from the paint because they are one of the best paint teams in the country. Make them shoot the ball from the perimeter, and if they make them like Cal said before the game, we go home. Arkansas already with 16 fouls. Kentucky will be shooting the rest of the half. Davis, stick three. But that is one of the guys you can't leave completely alone. Shibwe switched to Davis and was 10 feet away from him. Shibwe continues to have his way down low. He didn't see the ball this much in the entire last game. In double figures already with 10 points. Davis can't make it two in a row. Livingston saves it. And Reeves has it over to Toppin. And Toppin throws it away. Six-point Kentucky advantage. C.J. Frederick still cutting it out on the floor for Kentucky this entire time as Black scores. That's a big point guard who can score in the lane at his size. Great move. Toppin slices through for two. Oh, I thought that was an and one. And John Calipari's letting Don Daly know what you just said. Seven points already for Jacob Toppin. He is so athletic. Black on the attack. Livingston commits the foul. And that takes us to a timeout. There's a lot going on in this one so far. There's been a lot going on in this one from the beginning. 
All kinds of action. 21 to 15. Kentucky Wildcats ahead of the Razorbacks. Scott Tusk, the sixth, making his first public appearance here today. As we welcome you courtside with Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. And during that last time out, we just got further clarification about the bit of a melee we had earlier. Well, I'm going to clarify it. I don't necessarily agree with what I was told, but it, apparently Mikkel Mitchell was called for a common foul by himself. There was no double foul. The whistle blew. Then the Oscar Shebe threw the elbow. That was a dead ball technical because it happened on a dead ball. And then right after that, Anthony Black came in and pushed one of the Kentucky kids, and he got a dead ball technical technical foul. So they were offsetting dead ball technical fouls that only started with a foul by Mikel Mitchell. Boy, I tell you what, I didn't see it like that. I got to be honest with you, Andrew. And neither did Gene. Neither did Gene Steratore. So a big sequence there. And now a six-point Kentucky advantage as Black misses from the free throw line. That is what he told me, right? That is exactly <laughs> what they told us. Well done. Devontae Davis heads out. Is an Arkansas team trying to stop a two-game losing streak, although both of those losses against teams ranked in the top 15 at Alabama and at Tennessee on Tuesday night. Kentucky off to a hot start shooting. They're 8 for 13. They lead it 21 to 16. And you know, it's very smart by Cal to have Toppin bring the ball up because you got Ricky Council on him, who's, not, who's a good defender, but he's not the real steel guy on that team. Toppin saves it, but here comes Smith Jr. with Walsh and the flush. I tell you, you can see why Arkansas has 134 dunks on the season. They average four and a half a game. Four today already. Livingston for three. Too strong and Walsh the rebound. And you know, Kentucky one is number three in the nation offensive rebounding percentage. They better get on the glass a little harder. Smith comes up short on the shot and Sheboy clears. A Duke Fierro on the floor right now for the Wildcats and a foul is called inside against Arkansas. Well, one, there's one of those turnovers that leads to a steal. And Walsh with the finish off the lob from Smith. Walsh celebrated his 19th birthday yesterday. And at the end of practice, which we attended here in Fayetteville, the team got together and sang him happy birthday. One of six freshmen on this roster. You know, they're number 13 in the nation average height, Arkansas. They've got overall pretty good length. CBS Wednesday, don't miss the action-packed new series that critics are calling an entertaining ride, enjoyable escapism, and pure merriment. Make a date with a new True Lies Wednesday, 10, 9 Central on CBS. So as we told you a short time ago, Kentucky shooting the rest of the half. That was the seventh team foul against the Razorbacks. Arkansas gets to the foul line a lot, and they also foul a lot. Kentucky is seven for seven from the free throw line to start this one. Nick Smith Jr. on the bench right now for Eric Musselman's group. And Cal just sticking with this man to man, which is in a lot of ways zone like it's packed in so much. Six on the shot clock. Wall slips inside, and a foul is called first. It's going to go against the arrow, the freshman from Leechdale, Pennsylvania, his first. Eric Musselman looking for his fourth consecutive 20 win season. Would be the first time Arkansas accomplished that since nine straight 20 win seasons in the late 80s and early 90s. Walsh is left open. Offensive rebound, Black. It's 
pretty amazing how silent it gets in here when Arkansas is on offense. <laughs> you hear a pin drop right now. Off the black miss, Walsh keeps it alive. With, with Shibwe not there, out of the game, struggling on the glass. Five offensive rebounds for Arkansas. Five on the shot clock, and it's taken away by Fierro. One on two the other way, and Black with the block. Wild sequence here at Bud Walton Arena. I tell you, there's a whole lot of athleticism on this floor. <laughs> Seven point Kentucky lead, and Walsh commits the foul on the perimeter. Well, Arkansas, one of the best shot blocking teams in the country, too. There's their point guard sticking it to the backboard with two hands. And then on the other end, Damian Collins, the SWAT, Reeves finishes at the other end. And that, that foul there was on Antonio Reeves, fighting a little bit too hard through Walsh. Chipway still on the bench for John Calipari. Walsh trying to split the defense, but it was well defended by Lance Ware. Out of bounds with nine on the shot clock. Well, Lance Ware really guarding a perimeter player here, but he stays with Walsh really well. And a foul inside as Council the fourth hit the deck. That's going to go on Damian Collins. Setting a screen for the uh, inbounder, Ricky Council there. Eight and a half to go in the first. Arkansas has missed its last five field goals. Council is fouled on the drive. And you got a good look there what Ricky Council does. He's one of the most free throw attempting guys in the SEC conference. Not a great three point shooter, but this kid can drive him. And he knocks him down at the line 77%, which is 10th best in the SEC. Nice luxury for Eric Musselman to have the third leading scorer in the conference come off the bench. That is what Council has been doing. Fifth consecutive game that he's come off the bench. And Shibwe is set to check back in for Kentucky. Yeah, but he's taken 167 free throws on the season. And now 17 points away from 1,000 for his career. This is what he has done off the bench. Shooting 36% from deep. And he was the sixth man of the year in the American Conference last year. First two years at Wichita State before transferring in to play for Eric Musselman. One more for Council at the line. Makes them both. Makai Mitchell matched up with Shibwe for Kentucky. There it is. There's the double cut, too. Crowd wanted to travel, they don't get it. Shibwe turn around short, and the rebound comes to Fierro, and it poked away by Council. Toppin recovers as we approach eight minutes to go in the first. When Shibwe comes in, the glass just changes. Reeves for three. It's good. Antonio Reeves from deep. 40% three-point shooter. By far the best three-point shooter on the Wildcats. Already has nine points in the first half. The bottom line is this game has been mostly in the half court, and Arkansas not really comfortable playing that way. As you can see there. Poked away, but Walsh recovers at midcourt. Smith the lob, Council the finish. Yeah, that was Jacob Toppin. He needed to get there. He was almost there, but he got beat by Council that time. And here come the fans. A whiteout today at Bud Walton Arena. Already five dunks in this half for the Razorbacks. 
Shibwe has been working on that part of his game, but it's off the mark. The arrow offensive rebound goes up with it and loses it. Saved by Smith. Up ahead, Council. Top and chasing. Oh, Ricky, you so fine. We are back with a look at the Jersey Mike subs game summary and we've seen eight dunks already in this first half lap. Hey, one thing about these two teams, there is really an intense amount of athleticism on both sides of the floor. You're talking lobs, you're talking steals. The finish by Council right here is big, big time. This is a this is a broadcaster's dream to be sitting courtside and watching guys' legs up in the air so high. It's unbelievable. But, you know, one of the things I'm surprised at, Andrew, is, you know, Kentucky only has four turnovers, but Arkansas has seven points off those turnovers, so they haven't really been able. The thing that, that I'm surprised at is how easily Kentucky's been able to get the ball to Jibwe. He's got eight shots already. He only had six shots the entire game the first time against Arkansas. So even without a point guard, they've been able to get the ball into Shibwe almost any time they want. And they did it, to your point, even with Mikel Mitchell on the floor, but also keep in mind how much Arkansas has missed having Mikel out there with the two fouls. Oh, and now a little zone with the trap on top. Surprised. That really surprised Kentucky there. Davis gives it up, though, and Toppin. The lob to Shibwe. Nice move by Eric Musselman coming out of the timeout to go zone and trap the, the point guard in the middle of the floor. Toppin, in that case, they almost got the turnover, but ended up giving up a dunk. A dozen for Oscar here in the first half. Council. Oh, he's heating up. Eight points for Ricky Council. So he's 10 away from 1,000 for his career. Six minutes to go in the first. Been a good one here in Fayetteville. Now what happens at the end of the shot clock with no point guard? It's Reeves over to Livingston. He's got to put it up. He doesn't see it and a shot clock violation. See, in that situation, Antonio Reeves has to keep it. There's five seconds to go. He's the best ball handler on the floor. He's got to keep that ball. Turnover number five in the first half by Kentucky. Just two for the Razorbacks so far. They trail by four. Nick Smith Jr. at the scorer's table for Arkansas. Davis from way out there. And a long rebound, tracked down by Shibwe. Calipari will take that all day. Topping on the wing, his jumper. And it's ripped down by Council. Numbers the other way. Council leaves it for Mitchell. And he has to pull it back. They recovered quickly there. Looked like they were going to get a transition basket. John Calipari is getting a, a warning for coming out of his coaching box. <laughs> he's now, yelling. Now he's clearing space <laughs> so he can sit down. <laughs> he's, he's calling out the snowplow. Calipari was ejected against Arkansas three years ago. Walsh fakes the three. I mean, look at this defense, how far off they are playing Arkansas. Their heels on the three-point line. Walsh in the corner, shot clock down to four. Walsh, step back three. Sheboy fakes, gets his man in the air, double dribble. and they do call a double dribble. I think the referees were like shocked, like, did he really do this? Turnover number six for Kentucky.
Black races up ahead, trying to go all the way. Offensive foul, a little bit out of control there for Anthony Black, and he picks up his second foul. Yeah, that was a mistake there, but these are the kind of things that a freshman could do. Updating the SEC standings with AM defeating Alabama earlier today on CBS. Kentucky trying to finish in the top four. They'll finish third with a win today, and that would ensure a double bye at the SEC tournament next week in Nashville. You know, I'm not a big fan of the double bye, but in, in Kentucky's case, they probably could use the extra rest for Wallace and Wheeler. And Frederick, who has not been back. Correct. The arrow for three. And it's tracked down by Davis. The arrow has only made three threes all year. Davis coast to coast. When these guys get a long rebound, Arkansas, they are gone. You got to get back in transition fast. The arrow all the way off glass. Too easy through that Arkansas defense. I think the arrow is one of the guys that Calipari told before the game. Hey, listen, you want a chance to play? You're going to get it today. Show yourself. Smith picked the two. Five points for the freshman, Nick Smith Jr. I mean, Jacob Toppin has played point guard this whole game. Tough oh. runner for Reeves. This guy knows how to score. Kentucky's had the answers at the other end. 11 for Antonio Reeves. Smith for three. Well, I mean, Kentucky shooting 54% for the game. In the first game these two played, Arkansas shot 63%. Mitchell is called for the foul inside. Kentucky free throws when we come back. Three minutes to go in the opening half. High level action here on CBS. Back in Arkansas, Kentucky leads by four. Coming up, at and at the half. Greg Clark and Seth will break down our first half and get us caught up on a very busy day of college hoops. Selection Sunday is eight days away. It's all coming up on AT&T at the half and our Jerry Palm as both of these teams in the NCAA tournament. Kentucky as a seven seed today for Jerry Palm and Arkansas as a nine seed and there'll be opportunities next week at the SEC tournament to beef that resume up even though both teams are in. Yeah, no doubt they'll have an opportunity to get some quad wins, the quad one wins the further they're able to advance in the tournament. Eric Musselman, talking with him at practice yesterday, said that the non-conference portion of Arkansas' schedule really helped them, in his words, saved them. Remember, they started SEC play one in five, but they didn't have a bad loss in the non-conference. Couple of nice wins, San Diego State included, and that has really helped Arkansas here late. Well, look, they didn't have their best perimeter shooter, and that's why they've become one of the worst. They're one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the country without Nick Smith and. Trayvon Brazil, who only played eight games, a transfer from Missouri, was a big guy who could shoot the ball. So missing those two guys definitely hurt Eric Musselman. Kentucky's nine out of nine from the free throw line. They lead it 36 to 30. Here's Smith going baseline. Good job by Toppin to be there. Yeah, they switched that really fast. They're switching all these screens. That jumper not there for Council, a fight underneath Kamani Johnson battling Chris Livingston. And the foul is going to go on Kentucky and Livingston. Kamani Johnson is the lone senior who went through senior day today for Arkansas, the Brooklyn native, and the younger brother of former Kentucky center Dakari Johnson. Lance Ware comes in for Chris Livingston. Johnson this season just 53% at the line. He airballed a free throw late Tuesday in the loss to Tennessee. And cannot hit the front end of the one and one. Reeves comes to get it.
Toppin launches from the outside, off the mark, and Davis is able to stay in bounds with the rebound. I mean, he was wide open. He's only a 31% three-point shooter. Inside two minutes to go in the first half. Smith Jr. hits. That was a quick move to the floater. Steve, we're almost at the half. Why hasn't Arkansas really been able to exploit the fact that Kentucky doesn't have a point guard today? They need to have their best pressure guy, I think, which would be Devo Davis on Jacob Toppin. They are avoiding Devo Davis as much as they can in this game. Smith cannot kiss it in, and the rebound to Ware. I mean, Calipari's got a good play. And it's working out well as Reeves hits again. And then we have a whistle inside. And Kamani Johnson is called for the foul. Well, you take a look here what Antonio Reeves does. Okay, we can run it from there. He does a great job of curling right here. He reads the defense. Stop right there. The defense is trailing him, so he's able to curl and shoot the little pull-up in the lane. Great read of the defense. And now the officials are at the monitor to take a look at this last play to see if there's anything potentially flagrant with Shibwe there. That wasn't as bad as what we saw earlier in the game. Gene Steratore, what do you think? I agree with Coach that it's not as severe, but I think you need to look at it in this regard now, too. Shibwe's arm is up high. This contact is to the head and neck area, and it is excessive, in my opinion, based on what that play dictates. So, in my opinion, this falls at least into a flagrant one. You see the hand there, yep. and now that hand around the face. You're, you're finishing off a play there. That doesn't feel like a basketball play to me, guys. Yeah, no, 100%. You can see it there. He almost smacked the kid in the face, really. With his, so he's going to get a flagrant one there, it looks like. And it looked like they initially, it was my mistake, they called a foul on Kamani Johnson. They did not. They were just pointing to him on the ground, which has allowed them now to go to the monitor. And now the Kentucky bench is getting an explanation, and we're going to get one as well. It is a flagrant one on Shibwe. Two shots for Arkansas, and they'll get the ball. Gene, do you agree? I do agree. And, and look, you know, this is an intense basketball game, as we're all what, uh, witnessing right now from the officiating lens now. You don't start calling ticky-tack fouls, but you need to stay aware of off-ball situations and be a really good dead ball official once whistles are blown and keep this keep this intensity at a high level but controllable now and with a minute 17 left in the half you want to finish this half and start the second half knowing that that's what we're looking at as we move forward guys yeah it, there's no doubt you got to keep control of this thing and you know chief way is a very physical player and let's say this both teams are being very physical in the lane in this game Shibwe with two fouls, he sits. We just told you about Kamani Johnson at the free throw line, but he notched the first one in. Last week, Bruce Pearl, after Auburn lost to Kentucky, called Shibwe the most physical player in all of college basketball. And Johnson makes them both. When you're grabbing five and a half offensive rebounds a game, you have to be a very physical guy. But, you know, and I, if I coached against him, I would tell my guys, you have to be physical back. That's the only choice that you have. And now Kentucky goes to the zone for the first time. Something they have not done a lot of this year. Ten possessions the entire season. One of them was in the first game against Arkansas. With one minute to go in the half. Smith lost it right to Collins, who had it poked away. Good hustle by Johnson. Right back to Smith. What a lift Kamani Johnson has provided off the bench. And Smith now with nine points. I think right now Kentucky's got to milk this thing down. They want to get out of here at, at the worst, tied up. And now Eric Musselman is sending defenders at the ball. He just had Walsh crash up. 
Toppin frees up some space but misses. Right to Collins who scores. Arkansas going to get the last one now. 15 seconds to go. Shot clock turned off. What an entertaining first half here from Fayetteville. Being in the zone in this situation, they have to be careful that they get matched up, especially with Smith, because he'll take a three at the end. Council for three. It's well short, and that is how the first half ends. Kentucky 15-0 this year when leading at the half. We saw a whole lot in that first 20 minutes. Kentucky up by four. Greg Gumbel, at and at the half right after this. And half the seventh annual Lappy Awards, <laughs> America's favorite awards program. As we welcome you back courtside, that is actually a real thing. He's Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. And I think Kentucky should get an award for how well they played without a point guard in the first half. I mean, if you told John Calipari they're going to have 40 points, they're going to be up by four, they're going to shoot 52% and only have six turnovers, he'd have taken it right then. The big key in the game so far, Andrew, is that Arkansas only has two steals. Forget the turnovers. It's the two steals that lead to fast break baskets. If that's what Kentucky can keep down, for the next 20 minutes, they can win this thing. Let's take a look at the first half stats. They're brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. See Kentucky 9 out of 9 at the free throw line. Reeves played all 20 minutes in the first half, and he's leading the way with 15 points. Yeah, he's been terrific, and you see nine points off turnovers, but those aren't transition baskets, and that's what Arkansas wants. They need to get out transition, because I think when they did, Kentucky had some trouble getting back. I think Eric Musselman in the second half is going to look to double team a lot more. He's got to make these Kentucky guys make more decisions. That's what they don't have. They don't have a decision maker. If you trap and double, you make them make decisions. That's how you cause mistakes. Keep in mind, Mikel Mitchell only played three minutes in the first half because he picked up two fouls. He did a great job against Shibwe in Lexington. Let's see his return to the floor makes an impact here in the second half. Yeah, he was great, as you said, Andrew, in that first game defensively. I don't know about that shot to start the half. Livingston misses the three. There's a reason why he was that open. Kentucky's one of seven from deep today. I think you come in and you give Sheepway a touch right away. But I can't emphasize enough, look how packed in this defense is for Kentucky. Nobody coming out past the three-point line. Davis with six to shoot. Mitchell around Livingston, but too strong, and Toppin brings it the other way. Tenth rebound for Sheepway, so he has his 18th double-double of the year. And a foul is called, and is that going to be on Mikel Mitchell, which will be his third? I and think Sheepway is. is slow to get up in some pain on the ground. It is the third on Mikel Mitchell. Let's see what happened to Sheepway. Looks like his left leg, leg got tangled up with Mitchell. <laughs> Sheepway is up. And let's see if he stays out there or heads over to the bench. Looks like he's trying to shake it off and stay in the game. He now has 46 career double-doubles at Kentucky in 63 games. And Shibwe is going to come out. Lance Ware is going to check in. So we'll see how long Shibwe sits for. He's like seventh all-time in rebound. He's only played 63 games for Kentucky. How about Mikel Mitchell staying in there as Reeves hits with the three fouls? Steve? Yeah, I don't know about that because if he gets his fourth, he's going to sit down for like 14 minutes. Now he's coming out. Walsh is coming in. But I wouldn't have let him play defense. 17 for Reeves. One thing you don't want him to get is like an offensive foul screening somebody. Davis for three. It's gone. Points for the man they call Devo here in Fayetteville. Top 
seven by Davis, but Davis recovers, knocks it out, and it will stay with Kentucky. Thursday, see why everyone believes in ghosts. It's a funny new episode, guest starring Matt Walsh. It's this Thursday after Young Sheldon on CBS, or catch up anytime on Paramount+. Plus. Mitchell has come out with the three fouls, topping off the inbound, and we have Reeves and Davis exchanging words. They need to really back away, all these kids. That basket's not going to count. It was blown dead before. Davis and Reeves were jaw to jaw. I mean, don't these guys want to play? And Davis has called for a foul. That's the second on Devontae Davis. And Davis is still pleading his case. Davis is right up in the face of Reeves. Sheboy sets a screen, and they're going to get Davis. He's got to be careful, and they teed him up. You saw that coming. Eric Musselman should have taken Davis out of the game. He was obviously getting way too emotional. That was a foul on him, no doubt. And now he gets a technical foul, so that's two fouls on him. Gene, we're seeing emotions continuing to run high here. Well, th that's exactly right, Andrew. And at this point right now, I think the officials are doing the right thing here. What you have to make sure of now is as much as you can, you need to manage the players. You have to let them know that you're there. You don't want them to lose their intensity, but the extracurricular stuff, what happens as soon as the whistle blows, and the coaches need to be engaged with the officials as well to know, look, this is not what we need for the next 18 plus minutes of basketball, uh, but we can't let anything happen now extra. Anything extra now has to be met with, with technical fouls. The officials will keep this under control however they have to, and if it's with tees, that's what they have to do right now. Well, Gene, there's no doubt about it. This thing has been chippy from the beginning. And now De Devo De Davis. Devontae Davis was just ejected. He got a second technical foul right after the first. And he is now out of the game. Wow. I was just getting ready to say he had four. Now he gets double technical. He's gone. He probably should have come out, come out of the game right at that point where everything started with Reeves just to calm him down. Let's take a look if we can see what happened when Davis was walking off after the technical with his fourth. Oh, yeah, he hung around the bench and decided to say something else. At that point, you got to grab him. Their his teammates, top, the coaches, somebody's got to grab him there. Their top three-point shooter, arguably their best defender, and now Devo Davis is done with 18-15 to go. Leads him in steals. He's the most he's the best pressure guy they have in terms of pressuring the ball. Now he's gone. Gene, how about now these officials in a hostile atmosphere? Everyone is down their throat right now. Yeah, it is, Andrew. And you know, these down times, even though we're shooting tees, th this is a tough situation to be in for the officials. Now look, you don't start calling ticky tack fouls or things like that. And you have to understand, the intensity of this game isn't going anywhere. They're going to continue to play with this level of intensity. You need to be engaged as an official, though, and rise up to that intensity and make sure the game is played as cleanly as possible. And you need to talk to the players a little bit, get them back into the rhythm of playing basketball and not doing the extracurricular stuff right now. All right, Gene, thank you. How about Kentucky at the free throw line? 13 for 13 today. It is their ball, and they're now up by seven. This is where you need some leadership on the floor from your players, too. Reeves puts it up, and he can't miss. Largest lead for the Wildcats. And Reeves has 21. 
As long as Kentucky can keep Arkansas in this half-court set, it's better for them. Reeves now has 23 points. 48-39 in favor of Kentucky. Council from the free throw line. And Sheboy goes up to get it. No double. Sheboy reverse, not there. Walsh the rebound. Stayed. Oh, a foul is called against Kentucky. John Calipari can't believe that. Shibwe is called for his third. Well, he's got to come out for a while. And he is coming out. Lance Ware hops off the bench. He's got to sit for about six, seven minutes. 12 points, 11 rebounds for Shibwe today. It'll be Anthony Black at the free throw line. CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions women and girls have made on and off the field of play. Anthony Black's mom, Jennifer, played soccer at Texas and Baylor. His dad, Terry, in the Baylor Hall of Fame for basketball. Kentucky has done a really good job in the half court of getting the ball moving side to side to get that Arkansas defense moving around. Frederick for three. And the rebound to Black. Kentucky one of eight from deep. Good shot there. Black. Matched up with Ware. Black trying to take him with the left hand. No. Gets his own miss. Put back not there. And Livingston off the glass. I'll tell you, Ware did a good job staying with Black because Black was intent on taking the big man. Reeves, corner three. And he continues to light it up. 26 for Reeves. The rest of Kentucky has 25. And we have a timeout on the floor. Kentucky by 11. Kentucky up 11 as we take a look at our fast analysis presented by AT&T 5G. Well, let's take a look here as C.J. Frederick is going to drive to the corner. Now we're going to stop it right there. And look what happens. He attacks. Antonio Reeves attacks the back of Ricky Council's head. He turns, he relocates to an area where C.J. Frederick can see him and Ricky Council cannot. And the guy who's the best player on the floor tonight knocks out a three. But after that basket, Lance Ware said what well, one of the officials told us was very colorful and got a technical. So it's free throws for Arkansas and they get the ball. And you know, Ware took offense that Black cleared it out down the other end and thought he was and Black thought he was gonna take him and he did a pretty good job defensively and that's why he decided to say something, but you need to keep your mouth shut. This is not the schoolyard. One more free throw for Nick Smith Jr. Nine points, five assists for the highly touted freshman and Steve. I know it's his 12th game. He's still working his way back into the flow. But now without Devontae Davis, there's a lot of pressure on Nick Smith to try to step up right now. I mean, this guy was one of the best players in the country coming into college this year. So he's obviously got the talent. But this is only his seventh game back after being out most of the season. 51-41 with 16-20 to go. It's Arkansas ball. Kamani Johnson is on the floor for the Razorbacks. They got a small team in the game. Usually at least one of the Mitchells is in. Walsh trying to get around Ware. And he cannot finish. The rebound comes down to Kentucky. With no point guard today, Kentucky has 10 assists 
and just six turnovers. Not a turnover in the second half. And the big thing, as we said earlier, Andrew, only two steals for Arkansas. Livingston's rejected by Walsh. Smith to the hoop, too strong. Kamani Johnson, the offensive board. He's giving them some really good minutes. His final home game at Bud Walton Arena. Black is fouled. That's going to go on Antonio Reeves. Timeout on the most consistent team the entire season. Now all three selections will actually receive the lappy in the next year. This is a real thing. We took pictures with all previous winners, and I would imagine that this is probably the high point of your life, giving out a trophy with your face on yeah, it. Oh yeah, that's, uh, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> let's say this. You deserve a lappy for the announcer of the year. Wow. Okay, well. Maybe one day we'll, we'll break one out for you. Okay, I, I'd like to be in the mix for that. Of course, I'm the only announcer you ever work with, so I'm one of one. 51-42 as we approach 15 minutes to go on the final day of the regular season in the SEC Conference. The tournament begins for the SEC in Nashville next week, and Kamani Johnson fouled off the steal. How about the spark the Brooklyn native has provided today? And finally, somebody getting in a passing lane for Arkansas, which they usually do so well. Aggressive, playing in his last game at home, has really given them a lift. A combined 27 fouls today, three technicals, two flagrants. Devontae Davis has been ejected. Oscar Sheboy continues to sit with three fouls. And see, John Calipari subbed two guys there. The one thing he doesn't want is for this game to get ragged by turning the ball over with steals. And there's a wet spot right in front of the Arkansas bench. Coming to practice yesterday, Eric Musselman told us that the atmosphere today was what he thought would be the best of the year in college basketball. Now, it hasn't been as crazy because Arkansas has only led for just over a minute, but it is still a sellout, a whiteout, and they are ready to go. If Arkansas can make a little run, Walsh is rejected inside. The Kentucky defense, which has been really good all year, hasn't really suffered from not having a point guard. It was the offense where we thought they'd be a problem, not the defense. And Collins connects. The lob to Walsh. Tough catch. He makes it. Now has to bring it back out. Yeah, Collins was a little late there. Another hey, block. Collins commits the foul. Oh, oh. Third personal foul, team foul number five. Third foul against Collins. Wow. I don't know about that one. It'll send Jordan Walsh to the free throw line. Don't miss original series, Tulsa King, the game, Star Trek Picard, and a mountain of entertainment on Paramount+. Plus. But you look back at the first game, Steve, Arkansas shot 62% from the floor. Today, shooting just 36%. Kentucky's defense in the half court has been really good. But I don't know about you, there's 14 minutes to go. I feel like we've been here for like six hours. 9,000 <laughs> things have happened during this game. There's been a lot. A lot of Gene Steratore today. Happy to have him. He's going to get paid overtime. Livingston. And Collins knocks Johnson down, and Johnson is called for the foul. And you know, that's absolutely a good call. Johnson... Johnson went under him right there. You'll see Collins going up in the air. He's allowed to come down. That is not a charge. He moved into him. I mean, people are booing that. Uh, it's like... I understand their home fans. That's a good call. Walsh got his hand on it and takes it away.
Black comes to settle it down over to Smith Jr. Let's see if he can heat up. Council's been quiet here in the second half. Smith for three. And a lone rebound tracked down by Livingston. Up ahead to Collins. And Collins is called for the foul. That was a bad pass, even though was, he had a wide open layup. And I think that's a good call also. And that's the fourth on number four, Damian Collins. You're going to see him there. Yeah, that's a foul. That's a good call. And now both teams shooting free throws the rest of the way. And John Calipari is going to put Shibway back in with 13.40 on the clock. I think with a 10-point lead, I might have let him go for a little bit longer, to tell you the truth. Because, you know, he's a physical kid. He can get his fourth in a second. Arkansas has gone five minutes without a field goal. They've missed seven in a row. You know, one thing about Kentucky, it's not like they have a million bodies either. But you don't want to lose Sheepway to his fourth. Council defended by Toppin. Council, no. It comes down to Kamani Johnson. And Smith tried to force a pass and turns it over. Kentucky's length has absolutely, Toppin in particular, has really bothered the perimeter players of Arkansas. Reeves had his shot altered by Smith out of bounds. It'll stay with Kentucky. With a win, Kentucky locks up a double bye in next week's SEC tournament. Jordan Walsh coming back in for Kamani Johnson, who receives a nice hand from the sellout crowd here. Yeah, he did a really good job. Shot clock is at 14. Sheboy in the corner. Reeves through traffic. Reeves on the way. Oh, how and good is this? Antonio Reeves. He's got 28. And that is a new career high for him in a Kentucky uniform. He was 4 for 17 against Vanderbilt. Hey. Mitchell. And the follow is there. And that stops a six-minute drought without a field goal for the Razorbacks. How about his touch for Shibway? Who's got Smith on him, by the way. No, he's got Mitchell. Mitchell's out of him. Oh. Offensive foul! <laughs> On Antonio Reeves. Wow. And that's the third on Reeves. <laughs> that's, uh, I'm going to say, a little floppy, maybe. Wow. That was close. Ten point game. Council on the attack. Council no. Mitchell the hey. follow. He missed it. I thought he got fouled. I, I will say this in defense of the refs. Foul is called against Arkansas. Go ahead, say what you got to say. In defense of the refs, this is not an easy game to referee. You look at what's been going on this whole game. I can't believe, Andrew, there's still 12 minutes to go <laughs> in this thing. Well, championship selection show next Sunday, 6 Eastern, right here on CBS, and the first invitations to the big dance going out this weekend, including tonight in the Ohio Valley. Missouri Valley, tomorrow at 2 Eastern on CBS. All right, 11.43 to go here in the second half. 
And Arkansas trails by 10. What do the Razorbacks need to do differently here, Steve? Well, first of all, they got to turn up the heat. Kentucky's been way too comfortable in the half-court offense the whole game. So they got to turn up the heat. Offensively, they got to start calming down a little bit. They're 2 for 13 from the field in the second half. A lot of that has to do with the defense, and that's one of the problems for Arkansas. They got a lot of good offensive players, but they don't really have a consistent threat to throw the ball to in the post. And this length of, and because of the game plan of Calipari to dare them to shoot the three, it's packed up inside, and they haven't been able to finish. Arkansas has 12 offensive rebounds, but only five second chance points. Jacob Toppin at the free throw line. After that last foul was called against Mikkel Mitchell. Here's Smith, back out Walsh, launches the three, and hits. Good job by Smith there, driving it, drawing the help, and Walsh knocks it out. Toppin trying to get it to Shibway, defended by Mitchell. Seven to shoot. Livingston drives, puts up a wild off-balance shot, and a foul is called. And Nick Smith Jr. has to be careful. Yeah, he better be careful because in this game right now, those referees are on high alert. Foul goes against Jordan Walsh, and that's his second. And he's smart. Look what Jordan Walsh does there with the freshman. He grabs him, says, hey, take it easy. Sends Livingston to the free throw line. And Jordan Walsh, only a freshman himself, he showed some maturity there. The UEFA Champions League continues Tuesday and Wednesday at 2 Eastern on CBS. And as always, all matches are streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Kentucky started 13 of 13 from the free throw line. They've now missed three in a row. Shibwe is able to get the rebound, though. Reeves, deep three. And skying for the rebound is Arkansas Black. Up ahead to Smith. Smith hits. Here come the Hogs. Time out, Kentucky. It's a 7-0 run for Arkansas, and they've cut the deficit down to five. And I tell you, I think Antonio Reeves did a good job there of not fouling Smith. He has three fouls. That's the least, that's the guy they can least afford to lose for Kentucky. Great job by Smith pulling up there instead of trying to force it to the basket. These fans on their feet. Building is jumping here in early March in Fayetteville. And some full court pressure by Arkansas. It's Toppin bringing it up the floor again, Kentucky, without Case and Wallace and Severe Wheeler. I'll tell you, Toppin has done a really good job. <laughs> Loudest, we've heard the building. Toppin turns it over. Smith out to Walsh. And the rebound to Thierro. I don't know, maybe Kentucky getting a little tired. They're starting to be a little bit more lax with the ball, or the Arkansas defense turned it up a notch. Here comes the double team. Reeves. Not this time, tipped out, and Smith Jr. has it. They change one of the Arkansas fouls, so Mikel Mitchell has three, not four. He stays out there, nine and a half to go. Foul went against Ricky Council. 
Smith to Mitchell. And he turns it over. It's a great time to get Shibway a touch. Calipari wants the arrow to run the show here. The freshman. He wants to get Reeves and Shibway on the same side of the floor. Like right now. Shot clock down to five. Toppin. Toppin for three. Whoa. Big shot! Jacob Toppin! In double figures with ten points. As the shot clock was expiring, and that quiets the building for the moment. Smith lost it. Livingston grabs it, bounces it up ahead to Toppin, right to Shibwe, and the follow oh. by Fierro. Shibwe traveled unbelievably. Council and a foul is called against Livingston. First to Toppin, three. End of the shot clock. Pretty good presence of mind. He knew exactly how much time was left so he could use the dribble. Shibwe traveled right before that. And hanging on the rim, that should be no good. That should not be a basket. He was hanging on the rim when he hit it, put it in with his other hand. That's... Ten-point game, Council at the line and makes the first. You can catch some Patriot League play tomorrow at 2 Eastern as CBS Sports Network brings you this year's conference semifinal round. Army takes on top-seeded Colgate. That's followed by American battling Lafayette. One up. Smash. Council makes a pair, eight-point game as we approach eight minutes to go. Once again, Calipari wants it in the hands of Adu Thierro. Chibwe, defended by Kamani Johnson. Out to Livingston. His three, no good, and the rebound to Council. Yeah, they doubled off Livingston. They're not worried about him shooting the three, and it paid off for Arkansas. Council with the spin cycle, and he misses, but he's fouled. What a move by Ricky Council, and that takes us to a timeout. I think we need to catch our breath as well. What a game here, Kentucky and Arkansas on CBS. And here from Fayetteville as we take a look at our game summary, Reeves with 28 points, Nick Smith Jr. has 12, but big moment just before going to commercial the foul on kentucky was on shibwe and that is his fourth with 739 to go well he's gone for at least till the under four timeout or if if arkansas goes on a run and ends up tying this thing they're down eight right now he'll be back sooner He's got 12 points and 13 rebounds today as Ricky Council is right back at the free throw line. Arkansas has been hurt by the free throw line this year. 69% as a team. And today just 12 for 20. One out of two for Council. He's got 11 points. He's seven away from 1,000. Antonio Reeves has not been able to get a good look in a while. Collins sets the screen. Reeves uses it, drives, and he is fouled. Wow. Count the bucket. What a day for Antonio Reeves. He does a good job here. He used that screen outside. Was able to get himself into the lane. Reeves with 30 points. The transfer from Illinois State. Grew up in Chicago, and Kentucky assistant Chin Coleman grew up in the same Chicago neighborhood as Antonio's dad. That helped make the connection, and boy, Kentucky is happy to have him. He's got 31. The rest of the team combined has scored 32 points. 
Black is fouled. Well, you said it, Steve. If this turns into a free throw shooting contest, Arkansas needs to step up. They have not fared well at the line this year, 11th in the SEC. Meanwhile, the foul was on Damian Collins, and he is just fouled out of the game. It was funny because Oscar Shibwe got up like he was going to go back in the game. Kelsey puts it out. <laughs> yeah, Lance Ware is going to come in. Eight points, eight rebounds for the freshman Anthony Black. Two shots for Black. You know who's had a quietly a tremendous game? Jacob Topper. Kind of understated, but he has done a lot of things, especially handling that ball. Ten points, three assists, two rebounds, including a moment ago the big three with the shot clock winding down. 63-55. Still plenty of time left in this one. Toppin. Here's Ware inside. Try to send it out to the perimeter. Tipped around right to Walsh. Hands off Black. One on three. Black all the way. Oh. Rejected. It was Toppin getting back. But they give it away. And Smith with the jam. What a huge turnaround that was. Smith has 14 to lead the Razorbacks. I'll tell you what, Jacob Toppin flies. And now we have a stoppage. Fierro was hurt, I think. Yeah, Fierro came out of the game and they stopped the clock. Here's what happened after the rejection. Ware, uh, two bad turnovers by Ware, back to back. <laughs> I know the feeling. You've seen that look oh, yeah. before? <laughs> I know what it feels like. Black is a little winded, and Fierro is getting attention on the Kentucky bench. Kentucky now has more turnovers this half with seven than they did the entire first half when they had six. But what they have done, Andrew, is they've held Arkansas to five of 19 from the field. The arrow got his finger taped up. And he'll stay out there with 6.25 to play. They got to try and buy two and a half more minutes without Shibwe. You better call it. And they're going to give the timeout to Kentucky. The fans wanted a five-second call. Instead, Calipari calls timeout. Eric Musselman can't believe it. Musselman has been voicing his frustration the entire timeout. Kentucky now down to one timeout remaining in 625 on the clock. And look who's back on the floor. Shibwe with 625 to go. You what know, do you think? A, a little earlier than I thought. Maybe he's just going to keep him in for this offensive possession and then try and get him out if there's a dead ball when they go on defense. Let's see. But you might as well try and get him the ball if you're going to have him in the game with four fouls. Reeves. Walsh is right up on him. Toppin now with five. Toppin step back. Oh, no, it's good again. Three more for Jacob Toppin. 31% three-point shooter. Two big threes here in the second half for Toppin. This and that quiets the crowd. And this packed in defense is really giving them fits. Smith from the wing. Smith for two. That's just all talent right there. Good curl. 
Reeves from the line, hits it again. That was a great read of the defense to curl into the lane. 33 for Antonio Reeves. Smith trying to answer at the other end. Are they going to count that? No. Smith can't believe it. Foul was called before the shot. Foul for Antonio Reeves, his fourth personal foul. And that's the fourth on Reeves. Yeah, I mean, the foul was when he was on the ground. So big time foul trouble for Kentucky. Collins has already fouled out. Shibwe and Reeves with four apiece. I'll tell you what, if you told John Calipari that you're going to play 35 minutes and only played the zone like twice. I think he would have said there's no way and Based on what he told us before the game. I thought there was no way All right, one shot, man. Legal on the But the man-to-man -man defense has been so good Smith off the front of the rim and Livingston with the rebound Livingston has not scored today. He's 0 for 5, but he does have 8 rebounds. Fierro on the attack. And a foul is called. It'll be two shots for the Wildcats. I like the story Cal was telling us about Fierro before the game. He used to come to his camp. He was like 5'8", and he told him, I want to play for you. He said, oh, yeah, you'll you play for me. Are you kidding me? And then he became 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> Well, his father, Alamami, played for Cal at Memphis. So, familiarity there. And since he grew seven inches since his sophomore year, there was a, a large part of his childhood when he did bring the ball up. And he's grown so much that he's a 6'6", 200-pounder now. As if you're expecting to look for Stanford, Oregon, it's now available at CBSSports.com and the CBS Sports app. And we'll take you there as soon as this one is over. Sixty nine to sixty The arrows give oh here's the zone. We just talked about it. They try it now They got to really watch Smith Council is fouled And that's number five on Oscar Wow, that's not a good way to go Shibway fouls out with 12 points and 13 rebounds. That's a foul. That's a foul. Yeah, it's a foul. He put his hands on him. It's a foul. And you certainly don't want to get one. You know you got four. You don't want to put yourself in a position where the referee can blow, blow you out of the game. So Lance Ware back on the floor to replace Shibway, sending counsel to the line. I tell you, for John Calipari, this is going to be a long five minutes. <laughs> Free throws continuing to hurt Arkansas. 62% today. What they don't need is for Reeves to do something that's not wise. Reeves has the four fouls. Inside five to go. Reeves bringing the ball up and Black's ready for him. Over to Toppin. Tried some doubling there. Fierro launches. It's short and the rebound to Black. That was a very flat jump shot from the corner. Smith right through the D, missed it, the follow, no, the tip, no, and tipped out of bounds, and it's Arkansas ball. They've missed a ton of layups in this game, too.
I think it's a good move to go to the zone because I think Reeves and Toppin in particular, they got to be tired, but you got to get him. Smith's three is short, and the rebound is secured by Toppin. You know, Calipari said it. If they're going to make threes and beat us, we're going to go home. So now he's in the zone, stop their dribble penetration. Arkansas shooting just 26% in the second half. Reeves. This oh, guy. boy, what a heater he's on. When he comes off a screen, you got to get to him quick. Reeves has scored 35 of the 71 for Kentucky. We are back with our Capital One rewarding performance. Shibway, Reeves, Toppin have scored 60 of the 71 for Kentucky. Yeah, those three guys have done it all for them today. Toppin also bringing the ball up for the bulk of the game. But a, Antonio Reeves has been spectacular. A new career high for Reeves, including his time at Illinois State. 35 points. He does have the four fouls. Kentucky one timeout remaining. Arkansas has two. And let's face it, losing Devo Davis with 18 minutes to go, that was not a smart play by him to get double teed up. Sticking with that zone, I don't blame him. Stop from keep you from fouling and make them shoot from the three-point line. Walsh with wear on him. So Council's not a good three-point shooter. He didn't want to shoot that. But he's fouled inside. And that foul goes on Jacob Toppin. Foul second. Both teams in the double bonus. Arkansas in danger of losing its third consecutive game, and it would be losses in five of their last seven if they don't come back to win this one. Let's see what kind of pressure Arkansas comes with on a made free throw. Here's the pressure. Reeves over to Toppin. The arrow brings it across. Good job keeping the ball moving. Toppin from the baseline hits. 15 for whoa, Toppin. Whoa, whoa. And then what happened afterwards? Blacks on the ground. And they're going to take a look. After the bucket, inside, Ware and Black. I don't think there's anything there. They got tangled up, no doubt. It was not a hook and hold. Gene, you're with oh. us once again. How do you see it? To me, guys, it looks just like a common foul. I see Don Daly coming in with a common foul. I don't see a hook and hold on Black. I know the left arm's back in there, but I don't think it's a hook and hold. To me, it just looks like a common foul in basketball play. Yeah, I, I, it definitely was. I guess they called the foul they are aware on the floor. Taking a look to see if there was anything more to it than just the common foul. These guys have been busy today. Here comes our explanation. Fouls on where, but that means two free throws for Arkansas at the other end. Yeah, Black was doing a good job boxing him out, and then Ware just pushed him. Really not a good foul. Third foul on Lance Ware. 
at the line with two shots is Anthony Black. Black is two of eight from the field today, and six of ten from the line. Plus, you, no time goes off the clock, and you go all the way down the other end, shoot two free throws. 11 missed free throws today for Arkansas, and they trail by 10. One out of two for Anthony Black. Full court pressure again for the Razorbacks. This is their aggressive pressure, face guarding the guys. And a foul before the inbound is called against Arkansas, and that'll be two free throws the other way. So no time has come off the clock. Kentucky's going to the line. Foul's called on Nick Smith, that's his third. Yeah, he held him initially. For Antonio Reeves is at the line. He's got 35. The last time a Kentucky player went for at least 40 in a game was Malik Monk in December of 2016 when he had 47 against North Carolina. I was there in Las Vegas. Uh, I think it was in Las Vegas. Reeves is 10 out of 10 at the line today. Thirty seven for Reeves. And this we're going to see this zone until they prove that they can consistently do that. Black gets the corner three. Three minutes to go. Reeves is trapped. Great Able job. To Finds Toppin knocked out of bounds. It's Kentucky ball. What a great job by Toppin making himself available because Reeves was definitely in trouble at half court. Toppin chases it down with Black right on him. Zero against zero. The arrow inside. No, the follow by Ware. His first bucket of the day. And Kentucky back up 10. Council. No. And the rebound grab by Ware. I would, Calipari says slow it down. I would not start fouling yet. Oh, it's starting from now. I didn't. You know, 10 points nowadays isn't what 10 points was years ago. I don't know if I would start fouling yet. Some of the fans headed for the exits here at Bud Walton Arena. If they've been watching what's been going around the country lately, <laughs> with these, I mean, Michigan stayed up 13 with a minute and 10 to go against Iowa. Look, long way to go, I agree, but... What a job by Kentucky today. Without Case and Wallace, without Severe Wheeler. I mean, this was a game when we met with John Calipari pregame that he just said, we're going to go out there and have fun and see what happens. It was one of those type of days, and boy, did they play well in hostile territory. Think about the chess game that Cal had to play today, too. Subs, foul trouble. I mean, nine playing guys that don't usually play that much. They, he, he's really done a masterful job today. And this would be a quad one win. Right, now you got a foul. They're sixth of the year. Now's when they should be fouled. Toppin gets it across, oh. and the foul is committed by Joseph Pinion. Kentucky did have to adjust its travel plans yesterday. They arrived earlier than expected in Fayetteville due to the severe weather in Kentucky. We just want to 
tell everyone back in Kentucky that we're thinking of them. Those storms were really nasty. Half a million people without power this morning. So hopefully everyone back in Kentucky is doing okay. They've had enough there in the last two years. Yeah, absolutely. Council left alone for three. It's short rebound the arrow. And there's the foul with 141 to go. So this will lock Kentucky into the three seed in the SEC tournament. A double bye and an extra day to get Casey Wallace potentially back for the SEC tournament. But they have found, they, I, I was at their game at Tennessee when they didn't have Severe Wheeler. He was hurt. That was the first game he was hurt. You know, they're playing against one of the best defensive teams in the country. They win that game at Tennessee. Now they come in with no point guard. That day they had Kaysen Wallace, but he hadn't played much point guard the whole season. Now they come here without both of them, and they do this. And as Calipari told us before the game, now you're seeing some guys in different roles, which can only help you come tournament time. Who knows what would happen as Smith hits a three? You might need a Thierry to bring the ball up if somebody can't come back. So the fact that they've seen some of their own guys in different situations today, I think bodes really well for them going forward. And it really helped Casey Wallace to become the point guard when Wheeler got hurt. Now you have a game where Jacob Toppin was really one of the guys who had to do things. Antonio Reeves has been spectacular. And Shibwe was Shibwe. He played good in the first half, not nearly as good in the second half, but the fouls hurt him. Toppins had a real nice game with 17 points. I mean, Kentucky has 13 turnovers in the game. Cal would have taken that in a second. Thirteen assists, thirteen turnovers for Kentucky, and a thirteen-point lead with 125 to go. Let's face it, the point guard situation is part of the story, and the half-court defense of Kentucky is certainly the other part of the story. Smith, another three, here, 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 and the rebound is grabbed by Livingston. Livingston lost it. Black for three. Lost a foul and a foul and a foul. I mean, that was a bad turnover down the other end by Livingston. The arrow called for the foul, so Jordan Walsh has a chance at a three point play. Got a foul. In the arrow and here is where and that's the exclamation point for Kentucky Cal was worried he was pulling a technical I wasn't sure what was going on there I think he, he's saying I didn't think you were gonna do that to me Arkansas shot just 29 percent here in the second half Smith hits a three. Ten point game, 46 seconds to go. And there's the foul given by Walsh. Kentucky will win its 21st game of the season. First point today for Chris Livingston, although he does have nine rebounds. Walsh misses the three. Council skying in, and he's fouled. 
Foul goes against Chris Livingston with 34 seconds to go. That's his fourth. Arkansas only led for one minute and 15 seconds today. I mean, you have to give Kentucky just a ton of credit the way they played from beginning to end. They came together. A lot of times you come together when there's adversity, and they certainly did. Kentucky had lost three consecutive games against Arkansas. And a foul. Oh, wow. my goodness, against Toppin at midcourt. Not done just yet. Not 26 just yet. seconds to go. And they better watch this guy, because he can shoot it. Smith, that's a two. 86-79. And the officials are pointing at the clock. It's not a timeout. No, Eric Musselman did not call a timeout. They have to adjust the clock. Smith has 25 points today. His career high is 26 against Georgia. At the clock, it was running a little bit. And then they put six tenths of a second back on. away from the inbound it goes on council so no time comes off the clock with 20.8 to go fourth foul against Ricky council the fourth that's one of those fouls where you know obviously they want to foul and obviously being able to foul without any time going off the clock he made it look very good so that it wasn't called a flagrant That gives Toppin 20 points. Career high earlier this year of 24 against Louisville. Smith will launch a three. Follows his miss, gets it back with 13 seconds left. Walsh trying to get one up, he does. Off the mark, out of bounds. And it's Kentucky ball with seven seconds left. Updating the standings, Kentucky locks up a double bye in the SEC tournament. Started the year one and three in conference play and finish it 12 and six in the regular season. What a job by the Kentucky Wildcats today without Cason Wallace, without Severe Wheeler. They win it 88 to 79. For Steve Lapis, Gene Steratore, and our entire crew, I'm Andrew Catalog. We'll get you at the Eugene Stanford in Oregon right after these messages.